Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be putting together a small form factor gaming PC based on the all new 8700G. But with this PC, we've actually got a secret weapon up our sleeve, super fast 8000 megahertz RAM. And this is something I've been wanting to get out of the way for a while. But of course, since we're just working with an iGPU, I also wanted to keep this build as small as possible. And I recently came across a new case that's been up for sale on Amazon from a company known as A1 Box, and it's their new GM100. We will take a look at everything. And as we do the build, I'll go over all the parts used. But before we get into it, I do want to mention that this video is brought to you by URCD Keys. I've actually been using this site for a couple years now. They do offer Steam Keys, Origin, Uplay. They even offer Microsoft applications like Office but the main reason that I use URCD keys is for their Windows keys. Right now, their Windows 10 Pro OEM key is $19.84, but if you use code ETA at checkout, you can get 25% off. And another great thing about buying from here is they do accept PayPal. I just did this build here. I need to activate Windows. I'm going to head over to my updates and security. We're going to go to activation. As you can see, I've got Windows 10 Pro, but it's not activated. So I'm going to change product key. I'm going to paste it in here, choose next, choose activate, and Windows is now activated. They'll email your code once your payment is processed, and that's basically it. If you're interested in picking up cheap Windows 10 keys for your new PC builds, I'll leave a link in the description. So obviously we want to go as small as possible with this APU build without breaking the bank. So I opted to use the brand new A1 box GM100. Very cheap mini ITX case that supports a flex power supply. It comes in white or black and over on Amazon, they're about $42, but I'm sure you could find this much cheaper on AliExpress if you don't mind waiting it out. Personally, love the overall design, very minimalistic, and it's going to be perfect for a small form factor build. This is only coming in at 4.6 liters. And one of the best things here is we do have enough room for a 72 millimeter cooler, which means the Wraith Spire that comes with the Ryzen 7 8700G does fit in here quite nicely. One of the downsides to building mini ITX with AM5 platforms is the motherboard price. They can get quite expensive when you go with the higher end models. So for these G series APUs like the 8600G and the 8700G, I've been using the A620 mini ITX boards. And this one just happens to be ASRock's new Lightning Wi-Fi version. This thing is coming in around $135, really hard to beat right now when you take a look at other AM5 prices on the market. When it comes to storage, I opted to use a one terabyte Kingston Renegade NVMe SSD, but you can go with any M.2 if you wanted to. A lot of them are pretty cheap over on Amazon right now, one terabyte to two terabyte, but this Renegade is one that I had waiting around for a build, so I figured I'd go ahead and throw it in. For the CPU, or the APU rather, I opted to use the Ryzen 7 8700G along with the stock Spire cooler that comes along with it. It's going to keep this APU nice and cool, and it's also going to fit inside of our case, the GM100. We'll go ahead and put this 8700G APU in the motherboard, and if you're not familiar with this chip, based on Zen 4, we've got 8 cores, 16 threads, and CPU performance is on par with the 7700, but we've got a much more powerful iGPU because this uses the Radeon 780M. 12 compute units based on RDNA 3, and it clocks up to 2900 megahertz. Overall, it is the most powerful APU on the market at the time of making this video. RAM speed is really important when it comes to these iGPUs, and you definitely want to be running in dual channel. And this is the fastest RAM that I've tested with the 8700G so far. This is Kingston's new Fury running at 8000 megatransfers per second. It is the RGB version, so we've got a little bit of RGB up top, and it's a 32 gig kit, so we've got two 16 gig sticks. But now we've got the motherboard assembled. I've just installed that stock Wraith cooler that comes along with the 8700G. Remember, if you opt to go with the lower end 8600G, it is the smaller cooler, but it definitely handles that chip quite well because we've got less cores and less power over there. Initially, with this new GM100 case, I was a little worried that that Spire cooler wouldn't fit with the side panel on, but it actually goes in here very nicely. Just going to set it on down and that side panel is almost going to mate up with the top of the cooler itself. And personally, I don't mind because we've got a mesh side panel with the GM100. So it's going to pull all of that cool air into the case. And I'm not worried about thermal throttling with the Spire cooler. I'm not going to be doing any overclocking. And even if I did, it would probably just be on the iGPU side. This thing will handle it. Getting real close to finishing this build up, the last thing we need to install is the power supply, then we can wire everything up, 
And for the power supply, with this GM100 case, it supports a flex power supply. I went with this 300 watt, they're about $34. I've used two of these in the past, they're still running strong, not very loud, and we don't need that much power for this APU. Around 150 watts max, I would say if you're really gonna get down to it, make sure your power supply at least supports 180 watts if you're just using the iGPU and CPU. Now it would be really nice if this power supply was modular, but luckily these newer versions have all black cables instead of the red, brown, and yellow like we used to have with the same power supply. It was a bit unsightly, but we've got a little extra room in here, so I think we can get this cable management looking pretty decent. And yeah, once we've got everything wired up, uh, all of those cables sit right up front, not obstructing any of the airflow into the case from the side panel. We can still see the RGB on that Kingston Fury RAM, and I do need to install Windows, but let's go ahead and see this thing power up for the first time. We do have an LED indicator on the power button. It's blinking right now because I don't think I have the BIOS set up correctly, but we're booted up. That Fury RAM is pretty bright. There's no hot spots in it. I actually really like what they've done with the RGB here. Just adds a little bit. And even with the side panel on, it's not overdoing it at all. But yeah, I do think it turned out pretty nice. And remember, you can pick this case up in black. I'll leave a link to Amazon down below. But now we need to see how this thing performs. Of course, faster RAM is gonna help out with this iGPU. I've got Windows 11 Pro installed. I do need to get everything up to date, but let's move over there now. All right, so check it out. We've got that Ryzen 7 8700G, and of course with this we get those 780M graphics. One of the big reasons this is going to perform really well is the speed of the RAM we have here. We're running at 8,000 megatransfers per second. I've run some benchmarks already, and it's definitely looking really great for an iGPU. And I thought I did go into the BIOS and dedicate 8 gigs of RAM to the iGPU but it looks like it didn't take. And uh, either way, it's still gonna allocate up to 16 gigs, as you can see here from Task Manager. Not bad at all, it's just some games may detect that we have less RAM or not enough RAM and we'll have to kind of skip one prompt. As we know, the 8700G is a 65 watt part and that's really on the CPU side. I've got a GPU-Z, CPU-Z, and Core Temp up and running here. I'm gonna run a stress test on the CPU. We're gonna check out the total package power over here in core temp jumps up to around 65 watts. And this is totally fine, but we still need to stress out that iGPU. So we're gonna run a load here using GPU-Z, and you can see this jumps up over 100 watts. In fact, while really stressing this thing out, I've seen it jump up to 130 watts. And this is an extreme use case scenario. So the stock cooler that does come with that 8700G, even set up like it is right now, is gonna be plenty. I haven't hit thermal throttle. And the first thing I wanted to take a look at here were some benchmarks that I ran on this. And the first thing we're gonna be taking a look at is just Geekbench 6. Single core, 2,535, multi, 13,780. Really putting some good power down, but we're here for gaming and we need to see what this GPU can do. So I ran some GPU benchmarks using 3 d Mark. Night Raid coming in with a 33,746. With Fire Strike, we got an 8,102. And finally, Time Spy with a 4,125 on the Radeon 780M. This is the highest score that I've seen out of this. Before, it was on a mobile chip coming in at around 33,000. So yeah, I mean, breaking 4,000 in Time Spy with an iGPU, it's definitely something I've been wanting to see for a while now. So jumping right into it, first game I wanted to test was a newer one on the list. We've got Horizon Forbidden West. Up in the top left hand corner, I've got the built in AMD metrics running because this is the only way we can check out frame gen or fluid motion frames. Right now, it's completely off. We're at 900p low settings with FSR set to performance. Not horrible when you consider this game is brand new and it doesn't perform that well on iGPUs, but we can get much more out of this by enabling fluid motion frames. And what this is going to do is just insert frames where there's no frames. I did a video on this, checking it out on the ROG Ally and other handhelds, and yeah, it can really, really help out. It's not for everybody because it does introduce some frame gen lag, but let's go ahead and enable it. We're seeing an average of around 57 low 900p FSR performance. We're going to open up the AMD overlay, Alt and R on your keyboard. From here, we can enable AMD fluid motion frames. 
VSync has to be turned off and you need to be in full screen mode for this to work. Once you activate it, if you get this little green check mark, you know it's going. Plus, from our AMD overlay, we can see frame gen lag. It'll start counting that down for us. Now remember, we were getting an average of around 57 FPS with no frame gen on. And now you can see we've got a lot more. So this basically doubled our frame rate and we'll get those dips, but it does introduce that frame gen lag, which can affect input latency. So this is not for everybody, but if you love the game you're playing and you're not an online competitive multiplayer, uh, you can do a lot of single player games with this and it will help out on these iGPUs. It's getting better all the time with new updates from AMD and other overlays will not pick up those extra generated frames. So let's say uh, MSI Afterburner, it's just gonna give us that base FPS. We were getting around 57. If I brought that up on screen, it would still state that we're only getting that kind of FPS because it's just not detecting those extra generated frames. But with the 8700G, it's not bad. I wanted to try that one more time, but with Cyberpunk 2077, and right now we're at low settings, 1080p, FSR is set to performance, and with this much faster RAM paired up with that 8700G, we're seeing a really good frame rate. I don't have frame gen on right now. We're seeing averages up in the mid 80s here, which is pretty astounding for an iGPU given that we're at 1080, but we are at low settings. I'm gonna go ahead and enable frame gen. Get back into the game. And this is much more than I thought it would be, actually. I'm going to go into the settings because I want you to see this. We are at 1080p. We got to be in full screen. Graphics, custom, and we're at low. So everything is turned down to low, at least whatever can go down to low. FSR, performance. Yeah, I'm kind of blown away by what this thing does, even without that frame gen on. But you can see it does give us nice boost around 45 FPS on average. Pretty crazy to see this game running so well on an iGPU. For the rest of the games, we're not going to be using any kind of fluid motion frames. I just wanted to see what this thing would do with that faster RAM. And here we have Helldivers 2 1080p low settings FSR set to performance. We're getting an average of around 81 FPS. Forza Horizon 5, 1080p, no scaling, medium settings. This is one of those games that I always like testing on these iGPUs because I can kind of expect some really great performance out of it with minimal setup. If you wanted to add a little bit of FSR here at 1080, you could definitely lock this down at 120 hertz. When it comes to PAL World, we still need to take that resolution down to 900p until we get FSR support. You can mod it in if you want to, but this is just the vanilla game here at 900p low. With the auto settings, I'm at kind of the balanced preset, so it does favor performance over fidelity. But this is looking great. And of course, with that balanced preset or that automatic preset does add some FSR. And at the end, we had an average of 141. And yeah, with this balanced preset, it did take FSR 3.0 to balanced. As a lot of you already know, I've been a big fan of these AMD APUs, and the 8700G is turning out to be one of my favorites. Now, I know the base price or list price on the chip itself is a bit higher than everybody wanted. Remember, you can pick up the 8600G also. You will see a bit less performance, but getting into a small form factor PC like this with the 8700G would be a great way to start. And then later on, you can always add a GPU in a larger case. This is performing on par with something like the 7700X when it comes to CPU performance, but out of the box, we can game on it like it is, save up for a GPU. So if you're interested in putting something like this together, I will leave links down below. I did use a relatively cheaper case here because I wanted to kind of offset that RAM speed. This 8,000 mega transfers per second RAM is a bit expensive. If you go with something like 6,800, you can get out much cheaper and see almost the same kind of performance. I'd say there's a 12 FPS difference between the two. So I'll also leave links for that cheaper 6,800 megahertz RAM. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. If you've got any questions or you want to see anything else running on this rig, just let me know in the comments below. And like always, 
Thanks for watching.